first of all, I, I have to say this is a very interesting uh, group of studies that have been performed by uh, um, Dr. Epstein and Dr. Lauer and Dr. Kropthal, and T.J. Higgins has been working on these uh, potential use, potentially useful products for quite some time. In fact, I became aware of uh, some of his work about the same time uh, Dr. Epstein did because of the publications that caught my eye. I've been working on the safety assessment of genetically modified products since 1997 and focused primarily on human uh, interactions, human allergy. Is there any evidence that there are human effects in the United States where we've been eating genetically modified products since 1996. And so far there are no documented cases of allergy or of toxicity or of nutritional problems associated with the use of these products. So it is interesting. As scientists, we work very hard to prove safety. And when I saw the article um, by the Australian researchers that suggested that Dr. Higgins uh, genetically modified peas caused a problem in mice, then I looked at that study very carefully and I had questions and I'm glad to see that the consortium of people working on, on the GM's Safe Food Project are looking at it and Dr. Epstein's lab has tried to evaluate it and reproduce the study, which as she just said, it was not reproducible in terms of the uh, apparently harmful markers. Um, it's an important thing to realize that uh, Dr. Higgins has potentially very useful products for Africa where people are not able to use insecticides and things and, and they can have still good growth of a product that could be consumed by people safely, we believe. He's transferred a gene that is from the common bean that has been eaten for hundreds of years in the U.S. and Europe and India with no apparent harm and no allergy. So it would be nice if we can have an assessment process that really evaluates this squarely. And when we look at the GM safety approval process in the Europe and US and around the world, it's pretty much based on the Codex Alimentarius guidelines as a pre-market assessment to determine whether or not there's an indication of safety. And as far as I can tell, we've been working on some safety aspects of Dr. Higgins' products as well, and we have seen no evidence of harm. There are confusing results, and you have uh, investigators around the world who don't always agree, and they perform an experiment, and it may or may not reveal anything unsafe. But at this time, in, in my opinion, and again, I've been working on this since 1997, I don't see any evidence that Dr. Higgins' products would cause harm to consumers, whether they're animals or humans. But I think that there's more work to be done, and I'm sure other people might have different opinions. So thank you for the opportunity. I